All right, so here I am. Woo! The beginning of the Annapurna circuit. As you can hear all around me, there are all sorts of tropical bugs. That's because it's hot from the subtropics. But it's not going to last like this for long because we're going to be going up to 18,000 feet. Um, but for now, it feels good to be warm walking in a t-shirt. And life is beautiful. No more sounds of cars and trucks and horns and bells and cows and everything else that might drive you crazy in a third world is all gone now. And all you can hear is nature. So I'm going over my very first suspension bridge here and although I know it's safe it still feels a little sketchy because it's bouncing and you can see straight down. Namaste. Namaste. So one of the best parts about this trek is you'll be out there walking in the middle of nowhere surrounded by only nature and then all of a sudden you come into one of these little villages and they're just magical. It's like the outside world hasn't touched them yet. <laughs> While there, I stopped by the checkpoint to get my trekking permit stamped, and this made it official that I had finally begun the Annapurna circuit. <laughs> so as I'm walking, I'm looking up and I'm like, oh, that's amazing, look at that! And then I turn another corner, I'm like, oh my god, that's even better! And then I turn another corner, whoa, look at that! Now I can see why. They call this one of the best treks in the world, and it's only three hours into day one. The sun is setting, the mountain is just like glowing with all the snow on top of it. And I must say that life, life is very good here. So one of the unique things about this trek is you don't need to camp if you don't want to. It's called a tea house trek, and that means there's tea houses in every little village along the way. And right here is our first tea house for the night. They're usually pretty simple, not a whole lot to them, but you know what? When you've been walking all day, all you need is something flat to lay your head on and a little doll bot to eat. So this is the penthouse suite right here. You can see we have some nice tarp ceilings, nice tin wall, and a nice soft, well, not so soft bed. But hey, you know what? Who cares? This is great. I didn't think the mountains could get any more beautiful, but all of a sudden they turned to deep magenta. This is the kind of striking beauty you only dream about. And of course, this once in a lifetime moment inspired a little happy dance. So here I am, stirring some dalbot over a warm fire. So one of the things the trekkers don't always think about is it's good to order the simple foods like Dalbot because it uses less firewood than some of the other fancy meals. So for the next 20 days I'm going to be eating a lot of Dalbot in order to kind of lessen the impact on the environment and uh, use less firewood. It was so cozy and warm in that kitchen I could have stirred that Dalbot all night. So it's kind of fitting on my first night here on the Annapurna circuit that I have a romantic candlelight dinner with a gigantic plate of Dalbot. And this is what Dalbot's all about. A lot of rice, lentils, a little bit of greens. It's pretty simple, but it's good energy food. And when you're starving, you will eat anything and you will like it. Mmm. Yep, now do the trick. So I was just handed a glass of rice beer, and I thought maybe I misunderstood her and thought, oh, it's just milk, no problem, let me try this. Mmm. No, it is in fact something alcoholic. I wouldn't quite call it beer but it's kind of vodka-y, and I imagine if I drank this whole glass that I'd be uh, running around these rice patties like one drunk fool. So, uh, here's some rice beer for you. Mmm. It's been an absolutely beautiful day. I couldn't have asked for anything more on my first day here on the circuit. Now I'm all in my cozy little tea house slash shed, and I'm ready for a good night's sleep. And it's only 8 p.m., but uh, there's nothing to do but sleep, so good night.